Hello everyone and welcome to NFL Discussion, I'm your host NFL enthusiast Dougie Doug. In today's episode I'm going to be discussing Sunday week 11 of 2023 NFL season. On tap for this episode we have Chicago Bears vs Detroit Lions, Arizona Cardinals vs Houston Texans, and Las Vegas Raiders vs Miami Dolphins. And with that we're going to go ahead and get right into the action starting with the Chicago Bears who, despite having Jesse Fields back in the lineup, are the same old, same old Bears. Uh, at this point, the discussion whether Justin Fields is truly, truly a franchise quarterback, at least in Chicago, uh, is still ongoing. Early results are, or early indications are, no, Justin Fields is not the franchise quarterback for the Bears. So Fields made his return to action on Sunday after missing the previous four games of a thumb injury that was on his throwing hand. Upon re-entering the lineup, the third-year quarterback did what he always does. He made some plays, creative of his legs, and the Bears still came up short. Ultimately, the game ended up a strip sack by the agent Hutchinson, so Fields, 104 version yards, didn't mean much. The performance feels more like the culmination of a situation instead of a restart. Fields is talented. He makes plays. He doesn't get enough help. Uh, but how long do the Bears allow similar outcomes to happen over and over again? Chicago currently owns a pair of top five draft picks. The Bears are positioned well for a reboot that's the route the organization chooses to undertake. The current approach hasn't been anywhere near good enough. It's hard to look at fields and think he will ever prove to be wildly successful with the team <coughs> that drafted him. So kind of a similar uh, situation the Mitchell Trubisky guy, draft, guy uh, drafted in the first round, traded up to go get him, and well, it ultimately didn't work out. Now, in the case of Trubisky, I think they they didn't they get rid of him and then fired him. I don't remember how that one worked out, but for the Bears, it seems likely that they might be moving on from coach and quarterback in the offseason. Detroit Lions. So these aren't the same old Lions, these are the brand new Lions. And this year's Detroit Lions are the best team the organization has fielded in the modern era. That previous statement might sound like hyperbole, but it's not. Uh, the Lions' 8-2 record is the franchise's best start since 1962. To fully understand how long ago that was, the Super Bowl didn't exist at that time. It's so long ago that the Lions' last 8-2 started closer to the team's founding as the Ports. Mouth Spartans in 1928 than it is to it is to today. With Sunday's comeback victory over the Bears, the Lions also showed how they can overcome adversity. While trailing with two minutes and four seconds out to play, the Lions pieced together a 10 play drive for 73 yards and a David Montgomery game winning touchdown plunge. The Lions did not play well in this game. They committed four turnovers, including three interceptions from Jared Goff. Chicago held a massive advantage in time of possession by more than 20 minutes, but good teams overcome mistakes and lessen star play, and that's exactly what the Lions did. Detroit required both uh, required game-winning drives on their final possession on back-to-back weeks, but the Lions came up big in both instances. Otherwise, five of the team's wins came by at least two scores. This Lions team was good. And the record shows how good they really are compared to what the fan base is used to enduring. So, yeah, the Lions continue to uh, hold, hold, uh, hold steady atop the AFC or NFC North. And with the Vikings' loss today, it seems likely that the Lions will uh, wrap up this division that is basically theirs to lose. Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray continues to impress. As mentioned before, uh, the, the, the Cardinals season is primarily built around one specific factor, or it has one specific objective, and that is determining uh, who the starting quarterback will be in 2024. And uh, in the second game back from last year's torn ACL, Murray's movement and skills and quick, st- quick strike passing kept the Cardinals in Sunday's contest with a passing and rushing touchdown. Even in a loss, the outcome can be viewed as a positive. Arizona moving forward with Murray is the best possible outcome for the organization. It doesn't need a reset. Um, it shouldn't um, try, it shouldn't shift its focus to finding the next single caller to read the, lead the franchise. Instead, um, General Manager Monty Austin Ford and head coach Jonathan Gannon uh, should focus on building up the rest of the roster around, around Murray while fully implementing their approaches and philosophies. The loss actually bumped the Cardinals to second in the draft order. If the draft were held today, if the season were ended today, 
that today it, it's a great spot for the Cardinals to be in because the team can either look to draft a wide receiver with a pair of Kyle Murray or leverage that high pick and trade it to a quarterback needy franchise. Either way, the Cardinals would benefit uh, the season was always going to be a struggle based on the roster deficiencies however things aren't as big as they initially seemed so yeah Kyler Murray continues to impress and continues to make his case to be the French continue to be the guy the uh, franchise quarterback for this new regime Houston Texans CJ Stroud and Tank Dell make quite the pair and the Texans appear to be a grand slam when it comes to a 2023 draft CJ uh, uh, Stroud's rapid ascension to superstar status as a favor for not only NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year and potential MVP candidate and also potential MVP candidate. That has been the talk of the NFL, but Stroud doesn't do it alone. He does it with the help of his favorite target that also comes from the same draft class. Uh, the Texans selected Tank Dell with a 69th overall pick during the uh, draft. Dell has quietly pieced together an excellent rookie season and not for Puka Nakua taking uh, all of the attention. Dell would probably get some of that attention. Probably get some more attention. Going into Sunday's contest, Dell, Dell ranked fifth in receiving yards among rookies. He experienced a two breakout game in the Texans' victory over the Cardinals. Dell set new career highs with eight receptions for 149 yards. The rookie had six catches for 120 yards for the first two quarters, including an outstretched 40 yard touchdown reception. Um, his six touchdown receptions this season sets a new friend franchise record for a rookie. This connection between Stroud and Dell is only going to grow as the uh, year progresses. Dell shows exceptional short area quickness and route running. He's already been targeted by Stroud more than any other Texans receiver, as well as the quarterback is playing. He's getting a lot of help and, and, some, and most particularly from his fellow rookies. So yes, every every good quarterback has that wire, has that uh, number one guy wide receiver um, and it appears the Texans have that. They have their quarterback, the number one quarterback, and the number one wide receiver. And that that is generally a recipe for success in offense. Las Vegas Raiders. So this is a reminder to the Raiders to not abandon the running game and not put the ball in Aiden Connell's uh, hands because he is just not good enough to uh, for the Raiders to do that sort of thing. So over the past couple of weeks, heading into the Sunday, the Raiders racked up 273 rushing yards and two scores with Josh Jacobs at the forefront of a new physical offensive identity under interim coach uh, Antonio Pierce. On Sunday, Jacobs recorded 14 carries for 39 yards, his longest run going for nine. Uh, meanwhile, Aiden O'Connell completed 24 41 passes for 271 yards, a touchdown, and three interceptions. O'Connell made some rookie mistakes and misfired on multiple throws, but the Raiders uh, should stick to their run heavy approach in close games with a rookie single collar under center. Ideally, O'Connell should attempt about 25 to 35 pass, pass attempts in a game while Vegas leans on Jacobs to pick up yards on the ground. The latter is the engine of the offense and first time offensive coordinator Bo Hargree. Um, yeah, over. Yeah, he's the engine of the offense under Pierce and first time offensive coordinator Paul Hargrey. Against the Dolphins, the Raiders didn't have to give up on their ground attack in a one possession game. As time went on, O'Connell struggled, and the Raiders only scored three points after the first quarter. Hargrey must do a better job of helping O'Connell with the ground attack, or he'll expose the rookie's flaws. Miami Dolphins, and while their offense might not be putting, putting a bunch of points on the board, but and their offense doesn't need to do that with how much their defensive unit is improving. And this isn't a surprise, but the Dolphins are a stinger defense with Jalen Ramsey on the field. Since Ramsey returned in week 8, he recorded 3 interceptions. With Ramsey and Xavier Howard, Miami has 2 cornerbacks who can shut down an opponent's passing attack. Including Sunday's game, Bradley Chubb, Christian Wilkins, and Jalen Phillips have 16 sacks combined. On Sunday, the Dolphins had the worst offensive performance of the season, turning the ball over three times. Yet their defense forced three turnovers in the win of the Raiders. Coming into Week 11, Miami ranked 26 in scoring, assuming Ramsey, Howard, and other key starters and the front seven stay healthy. The Dolphins could finish within the top 12 in points allowed by the end of the season. They can win slow scoring, grinded out games with their defense. And uh, with that, that will conclude this episode of NFL Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.